Bowling pins are the most important, yet the least talked about thing in the sport of bowling. They decide whether you will win or lose the tournament. But why is their shape so bulb-like? How did they transform to what they are today? To answer our question, let's travel all the way back to the Egyptian time. The first ever known form of bowling was in an Egyptian tomb with wall drawings containing miniature pins and balls. The structure of these pins seemed to resemble the pin today, but with no head and a pointy tip. Historians think this tomb was created around 3200 BC. However, 2000 years later, more pin-like objects were found that resembled the pins used for another variation of bowling called Skittles, a historical lawn game and a target sport. But a later discovery in either 300 or 400 AD is where historians think the modern sport of bowling originated from. This type of bowling really wasn't a sport, but a religious ceremony. These were held in churches, and the pins were called kegels. When one successfully toppled the kegel, they believed that the bowler had been cleansed from sin. Now let's jump to the 16th century and talk about Martin Luther. The one who started the Reformation, nailed the 95 Theses on a door of a church, and the founder of Lutheranism. He was actually an avid bowler. As I mentioned earlier, the pins represented the sins of a person. People varied the pin setup from 3 to 17 pins. But people couldn't decide how many pins needed to be set up, so Luther was credited with deciding on nine pins. Someone from the International Bowling Museum states that Luther once preached a sermon that proclaimed Christians, quote, strive for perfection in life, but when we roll a gutter ball, all is not lost. Ever since then, nine pin has become more than just a religious ceremony, but an actual popular activity. It was so popular that in 1837, the first Congress of the Republic of Texas subjected nine pin to a $150 annual tax, or $3,880 today. Why they chose to make that decision is because they were concerned of ethical and moral reasons. People stopped going to work to play the game, and there were also alleged gambling practices going on. All other forms of bowling remained legal, and that's how ten pin was born. The modern bowling pin used to be made out of solid pieces of maple in the 1800s. However, when the pin setters were released around the 1940s, it damaged the pins a lot and caused a lot of replacements. Their method of fixing it was gluing pieces of maple together, which improved the strength of the pin, as well as a more controllable way to keep the weight of the pins the same. Finally, they gave their pins a white plastic coating to protect the wood even more. And there you have it, the modern bowling pin of today. From the stubby Egyptian pointy pins to now a 15 inch tall pin.